Welcome to our Denim and Blue Sunday at the Pra. To our guests, we are honored that you have come today to share in the last Sunday of the month for our new Providence experience. We hope that something is said or done that will lead you to join in with us. But whether you do or not, remember the doors of this church are always open to you. So on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Stephen Caldwell, and this entire New Providence Church family, we say welcome and do come again. Now it is time for some praise and worship with the New Providence Praise Team.
tell the Lord thank you. We can wave our hands and tell the Lord thank you. Because of his grace and his mercy. And because we love him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Can y'all hear me sing?
God in the name of Jesus. As we come to you, Lord, anything that we have done, anything that we don't even realize that we have done, Lord, we ask you to forgive us. As we pray this prayer, God, we ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. Father God, we come to you right now as humble as we know how. Because God, as we say, we love you, Lord. We worship you and we adore you. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We just want to take the time to say, Lord, we thank you for giving us help and strength. We want to take the time to say, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to touch the floor when we got out of our bed this morning. And Lord, if somebody or we did not say thank you, we want to tell you thank you right now, God, for giving us the strength, God, for giving us the youth and the activities of our lives. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, God, lifting up your name, God, because the presence of the Lord is here, Lord. And we thank you for being here right now, God. In the name of yes, Jesus. Jesus, Father God, look on the hospital, God. Yes. Go into each room in the name of Jesus. You know their condition, Lord. You know what they're going through right now, God. You know what the doctors need to do, God. Get in the hands of the doctors. Whatever operation needs to be performed, God. You perform it in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you right now because we know you can, God. We know you will, God. And you shall do whatever it is for them to do in the hospital, God. Look on the, the each individual, God. Touch them name by name, one by one, God. Look on the children, God. Look on the church family, children. Look out in the street, God. You can see them, God. We don't see them, God, but you are everywhere in the name of Jesus. Touch the children, God. Protect them, Lord. Dispatch your angels of protection around them. Wherever they may be, God, wherever they may go, God, dispatch your angels of protection, God, around them, God, in the name of Jesus. You know how to do it, God. You are the one, God. You are the only one yes. that can heal the sin. Yes. You are the only one that can raise the dead. You are the only one that gave sight to the blind. You are the only one that made the lame man walk. And right now, Jesus, we come to you right now. We come to you right now, God. We come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Touch individuals, God. Touch individuals in the house, God. Name by name, God. One by one, God. In the name of Jesus. You know their bodies, God. You know where they are weak, God. We need you to lift them up, God. Where they are torn down, God. We need you to lift them up, God. If they are sad, God, give them joy, God. If they are weak, Jesus, give them the strength they need. Hallelujah. We come to you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You know our hearts, Lord. You know 
Now it is time for a song of preparation by the New Providence Praise Team. Your name is strength, your name is power, a strong power makes me say, oh Lord, our Lord, how well is your name. 
Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong power makes me your name today for father you are certainly to be glorified and God while we are glorifying you simultaneously Lord God hell is horrified the enemy doesn't want you to receive the glory the enemy doesn't want you to receive the praise but I read somewhere, Lord, that let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
And God, we give you the glory today. We thank you now for making this place your habitation. For your word declares that you inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you, Jesus, for being in this house, for being the Lord of this house, for being our strength, our peace, our joy. Thank you, Father God, for your loving kindness is better than life. Bless us, O oh God, and we shall be blessed. Now, God, as I stand before your people today, I pray, Lord God, that you would anoint me afresh and anew. God, fill me, Jesus. Fill me, Jesus, hey, with your Holy Ghost power. Not only me, God, touch every person under the sound of my voice. Touch them with the word today that will transform, transition, and transcend any and everything that the devil throws at them. We bless you. We love you. We give you praise, oh God. Was in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, our soon coming King. His name we give you praise. And everybody who loves the Lord Jesus say amen. Amen. Come on, if you got a shout in you, go ahead and let it out. Come on, if you got a hallelujah in you, go ahead and let it out. Come on, if you can thank God for what he's already done, go ahead and let it out. If you know that can't nobody do you like Jesus. You ought to go ahead and just shout a hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're talking about the king of kings. We're talking about the Lord of lords. We're talking about my God and your savior. Come on, give him praise today. Clap your hands today and worship the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, amen. Come on, let's thank God for our praise team. Amen this morning. Amen, amen. Good to see you all in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hey, Mama Graham, good to see you, darling. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. We've been praying for you, Brother Graham. Amen. Good to see you here. And to all of you God's children, amen. Fred, we need to see you up here soon. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All God's children, I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, our, our soon coming King. And we want to welcome all of you who are listening in on our Zoom broadcast and streaming. Amen. To our YouTube channel and Facebook. We want to say to you this morning, welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house one more time? Amen. They used to sing a song in old church, glad to be in the service. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. And I thank God for you all being here this morning. Amen. Listen, if you got something, something to be mad about this morning, amen, somebody shall just let it go. Come on, just let it go, let it go, let it go. No need for you to be mad this morning. Amen. God woke you up this morning. Amen. Amen. You are here on purpose. Amen. Y'all don't know where to shout. Amen. God got me here on purpose. That means God has an intent for my life. Amen. And I want to say to all of you, I'm so happy that you are here. It's so good to see your faces today. Amen. And we give God praise for you. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for our band. Amen. Who, who sounds so good. Amen. Amen to all of them. Amen. And to all of my brother and clergy, I want to say to all of you, if you're listening in, amen. Some of my boys are in California and in Seattle. Amen. 
Bishop Thomas, all the way from Seattle, Washington, amen, is listening in to us with Bishop, amen, Sylvester Robinson, all the way from Tampa, amen, are listening in to us on today, to all of my fellow, amen, laborers of the gospel who sit in the pastor's seat of clergy, amen, this is Clergy Appreciation Month, and to all of our pastors, we want to say we love you, pastors, and continue to do the work that God has called you to do. Come on, let's thank God for all of our pastors Amen. Who labor in the vineyard. Amen. 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 I want to thank God for, amen, Reverend Brown as well. Amen. A clergyman himself. Amen. Amen. One day, New Providence, we're going to sneak over there to his church after our church. Amen. Amen. And be a blessing to them over, over there. Amen. 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 Listen, um, I want you all to continue to pray for those who are battling Amen. Situation, circumstances. Amen. Sister, Sister Woodley. Amen. Carlita Woodley just buried her mother-in-law after burying her mom. And so uh, a double, double hit. And uh, Sister Ford, I want you all to continue to pray for Sister Ethel Ford. Amen. And uh, that the Lord would have his way. Amen. With grace and mercy uh, as she is entering to hospice care. And we want you all to pray for her and for all of our saints. Amen. Mama West, I know you're here. Amen. Listening in and to all of you all. Amen. That uh, listen in and continue to pray for Sister Ruby Allen. Amen. And all of God's people, Deacon Nelson, continue to pray. Amen. We pray for him and we pray for all of the house of God. Amen. I want you to prepare yourself. Amen. Uh, just before Thanksgiving, we're going to go enter into another five-day fast. And I want you all to be prepared for that. Amen. So uh, in, the, in the words, one of my coaches, get your mind right. Amen. 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 Uh, there are some things we have to overcome. There are some things we have to remove the devil from. And we're going to pray, amen, and we're going to pray during this fast that the devil will be eradicated from our minds and evicted from our hearts. Amen, somebody. And that the love of God would dwell richly in each of us. And that's what we're going to be fasting for, the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Leading into our Thanksgiving. Amen. The same parameters we will be engaging in and however the Lord leads you. Amen. To augment it as you would. Amen. Uh, that means to make adjustments if you, as you would. You know your health situation. Amen. I'm not asking you to be like snake handlers who take uh, Mark chapter 16 as a literal Thing to do. Uh, the Bible should not always be taken literal, uh, but it is uh, filled with metaphor and simile. Jesus said, unless you hate your mother, your brother, your father, you cannot be my disciple. And at the same time, he says, honor thy father and thy mother. So I can't hate my mother and father and I honor them at the same time. Y'all here with me? And so he used what is known as an idiomatic statement, amen. And so you can't take it literal all the time, amen. If you took it literal all the time, I have some blind members and some no-handed people in the house, amen. If your right eye offends you and causes you to sin, amen, plug it out. If your hands cause you to sin, amen, cut it off. Amen. Amen. We'd be some stub shakings around here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just want to teach it a little bit, Fred. Amen. Can't take the Bible always literal. Amen. Amen. Let me move, Mama Collins. Amen. I got a word for you today. Amen. We're going to move with great precision and accuracy, but with expediency. Amen. 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 That means I'm going to hit it and quit it. Amen. That's what I just said. Amen. Praise God. We're going to hit it and quit it and we're going to be gone. But we got to pray for the dolphins because they got buffalo today. Amen. 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 Come on, stand on your feet. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Thank you, Cheryl, for my 
my birth, my uh, uh, my anniversary of 25 year balloons. Amen. I saw it in the office. Thank you for that, uh, Shepherd's Care. Thank you so much for being a blessing and remembrance of 25 years. Man, it's been a long time. Amen. 25 years in the preaching ministry, but been following the Lord for 30 years of my life. Amen. 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 It hasn't always been easy, but it's been worth it. Acts chapter 4. Hallelujah. Jesse, glad you're here. Help me preach today. Acts chapter 4. We'll begin at verse 13. Acts 4. Acts 4, starting at verse 13. When you have it, say, I got it. If you don't have it, say, hold on, Master. We read it. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man, the man, rather, which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go outside of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a noble miracle hath been done by them. It's manifest to all of them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Verse 17 says, But that it spread so that it spreads no further. Hmm. Among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God you judge for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard so when they had further threatened them they let them go finding nothing uh, how they might punish them in, to punish them because of the people for all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was about 40 years old in whom this miracle of healing was showed. Verse number 20, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Before you take your seats, just shout to somebody, I thank God I got a story to tell. Hallelujah. I thank God I I I you may be seated got a story to tell. God is an awesome and magnificent God. It is he that is worthy to be praised. Not only is God worthy to be praised, he's worthy a role to be worshipped. Worship is 
the expression to God of thankfulness and exuberant appreciation to the things and for the things that the Lord has done. In other words, if you see somebody worshiping God, if you see somebody praising God, the Anglo-Saxon derivative of this word says uh, that it is an outward expression of what God has done in your life internally. In other words, worship ought to be done according to the value you give to the one that you're worshiping. Let me see, can I put it where you can reach it? If you value God highly, your worship will be indicative of how you value God. If you value God on a low level expression, then your worship would show up uh, on just how you value God on a low level, amen, appreciation. But I hear some of y'all saying to me, Pastor, I'm just the way that I am. It's I'm not that kind of person. I'm an introvert type of a person, uh, but God don't care nothing about you being an introvert. God don't care nothing about you being a quiet amen person. Uh, he says, clap your hands uh, oh ye people, shout unto God uh, with a voice of triumph. It's not a, it's not a suggestion. It is a, a command. And you need to know uh, that when you come into his presence, uh, it's not about you, uh, but it's all about him. Can you help me preach? God, 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 the one uh, who put the twinkle in the stars. And reminded us that you can't shine without some darkness over your life. You, you, you gotta, you gotta hear what he's saying to you. That, that every time, every now and then, that there's got to be some dark days in your life in order for your light to shine. In other words, uh, you got to understand that Job said, "Shall we not just receive good from the Lord uh, and not bad from the Lord? The Lord gives uh, and the Lord taketh away." But I want to know: Do you still have a blessing? be the name can I get a little help here today do you still have a blessed be the name of the Lord Deacon McGregor you got to know there is got to be some darkness in your life in order for the brilliance of who you are to shine and people can't see your light Jesus says don't you take your light and hide it under a bushel listen some of y'all y'all stare around other lights more than you should because now you can't see how bright your light is because you're always around light skin I'm sorry light coat folk. Amen. But you need to go around some darkness every now and then uh, and shine the light uh, in the midst of the darkness uh, because you know just how good God has been in your life. Tell somebody I know how good God has been. Mama told me like this, son, God ain't on time and he's never late. Uh, 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 he shows up when he wants to. Uh, and when he wants to, amen, he is never early, brother, and he's never late. Uh, he's always on time. And when his time is his time, uh, that means it's your time. It is not on your clock. It's on his clock. It's not when you want him to do. It's what he want to do. Uh, and when you do what he wants to do, uh, when he does what he wants to do, then you got to do what you've been told to do. And that's to give him praise for the things he has done. Anybody got a shout in you this morning? Anybody got a hallelujah in you this morning? Uh, do me a favor. Look over your right shoulder real quick. Look over. This this in the spirit now. Look over your right shoulder. Some of y'all ain't looking now. Look over your right shoulder. and Now look over your left shoulder. Amen. I just wanted you to see just how far the Lord has brought you. I just wanted you to remember just how far God brought you. Somebody say, he brought me from a, oh, y'all know the song. He brought me from a mighty long, from a mighty long way. Uh, yeah, God, I'm talking about God. 
I'm talking about God who stepped out on nothing and said to nothing, let there be something. And he took something from nothing. And the only person and the only thing and the only entity that can take something from nothing is God. Man can never be a creator. Man is always going to be an inventor because you can't not create something because uh, there's something that was already created for you to create what you're trying to create. Uh, that's why man will always be an inventor and never a creator. Uh, because creation means I take nothing and I breathe on nothing and nothing becomes something. I'm talking to a bunch of nothings right now. I'm talking to a bunch of nothings right now. We are all just dressed of dirt. But you know what made you something? When he breathed into your body and you became a living soul. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you ain't nothing without God. Can I talk to you this morning? Ain't nothing without God. Peter and John now has celebrated God. Celebrated God in Acts chapter 4 because in Acts chapter 3 something took place. Acts chapter 3 the blind man at the beautiful gate with an ugly situation. Had a date with destiny and God stepped in and when he was asking for some change, God gave him a new change. When he was saying, can I get a little change? God gave him a great change. And the Bible says that he got on his feet, jumping, leaping, shouting, and praising God. Now, they see what took place. <laughs> they in the house of the Lord and church folk in the house mad that the man is on his feet. Oh, y'all don't know when to shout right there. Uh, you got to know. You got to watch folk who don't want to see you get up. You got to watch folk that don't want to see your life change. You got to watch folk that think you deserve what you're going through. You got to, y'all ain't sending nothing to me up here. You got to watch folk who want to try to hold you down in the name of God. But I'm here to tell somebody today that God says you got a reason to jump. You got a reason to shout. You got a reason to give them praise uh, because you've been somewhere a long time uh, and God has changed some things uh, in your life. Here it is. Uh, I, I got a story to tell. Deacon McGregor, Deacon Moss, be simple because, number one, the grace that God gives. Okay. Uh, uh, Y'all don't know that that's the number one thing you ought to be shouting about. You got to thank God for his grace. Songwriter says, for your goodness and your mercy toward us we offer praise oh, oh, oh y'all 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 don't want to thank god for his grace let me see can i remind you a little bit uh, because the reason why we got to thank god for his grace is because we still got some vices okay all right y'all y'all want to act like that y'all want to act like that some of y'all still play the lotto don't, 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 listen, don't, don't look at me like that. Some of y'all know you're still scratching them off, amen. Back in the day, my daddy used to send me to the gas station, amen, because the number man was right across the street. And my mama, who was the choir leader, amen, the choir director, she would catch me on the back porch, amen, and give me $3 for her. And don't tell your daddy I sit you, y'all ain't saying nothing to me up in here. Don't you look at me and be mad at my mama, amen, uh, because she still loved the Lord, but still had a little problem. She dipped snuff every now and then. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here today. Y'all know y'all got a little bottle in the car, amen. You take a little nip every now and then because you find out that sometimes it's good for the stomach, amen. Y'all know that some of you brothers know that you can't help but keep your neck straight, amen, because when that brown frame come walking by easy on the optic nerve and at times the correct and morphologically sound, you really want to give it a long look, but you take a real quick peek, y'all. Y'all don't want to give with this today. I, I, I got you. I got you. We all still got some vices. 
Don't you look at me like you ain't got nothing. Because if you're looking at me like you ain't got no issues, amen, uh, then that's the issue that you got. <laughs> uh, can I just talk to you this morning? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all act like y'all been saved all your life, but y'all knew what it was like to go down to those house parties with the blue light on and back up in the corner and talking about Shaka Khan, talking about she your sweet thing, amen, and you around here thinking that the woman in front of you is Shaka, amen, you so caught up in it, y'all ain't said nothing to me up in here, Rick James and Tina Marie talking about fire and desire, amen, and y'all oh, y'all act like y'all ain't never went to the juke joint, y'all act like y'all ain't never went to the club, amen, I'm talking about, you got a reason to give God praise. You got a reason to give God glory. You got a story to tell but you could have been right there, still right there, but you're in the house of God this something morning and right now you ain't backing that thing up. Huh? You lift in the name of the Savior. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Y'all show uh, some of y'all don't know. Some of y'all don't know. Amen. Drop it like it's hot. Amen. Uh, uh, but, but, but my mama used to do the y 2 Y'all don't know nothing about that. Some of y'all seeing saying, better give it me. Amen. And remember those days. Hey, man, you ain't been, listen, you ain't been removed from those days a long time. Amen. Just because it's snow on the roof don't mean ain't no fire in the furnace. Y'all don't shout me down. <laughs> Don't shut me down this morning. Amen. And the reason why I know there's still some fire in the furnace because some of y'all try to die the roof. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Amen. 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 We got vices in our lives. Somebody shout, I got some issues. You got some issues. All us is got some issues. And the reason I got a story to tell Sister McCray is because he gave me grace while I dealt with my issues. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. I'm cooking with grease right now, y'all. He gave me grace while I still got my issues. See, y'all missed the shout in that. I, I said, he gave you grace while you still got your issue, not grace, and he got rid of your issue. See, we're still walking with a limp. Some of us here limping through life. Y'all know what, how it is. Uh, we can be limping, amen, but we don't want nobody to know we hurt. And as soon as somebody comes, we try to walk real stiff and straight. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Thank God for his grace. You know how, you know how we know how good God is. Can I just tell y'all a story? One day, some preachers got together. And they found this young lady who was of the night. She made her occupation on being an attraction that was really a distraction. These preachers got with her. And one of them volunteered for the job. To go in with this woman and be like Abraham and Sarah. Then they devised a scheme to show up and to blame her for doing what they hired her to do. Showed up, caught her in the act of adultery because she slept with a married man who happened to be a preacher. Takes her to Jesus and says, the law says this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And this is what I love about the Lord. Jesus said, I know you're right. She should be strong. But since y'all didn't bring the Negro, I mean the man, let me teach you a lesson on how 
to be a thorn store, thorn stone thrower. Jesus broke down in the dirt. And with my sanctified imagination, he started writing some stuff. He wrote gossiper. He wrote liar. He wrote cheat on taxes. He wrote swindler. Fornicator. Self-righteous. And when he talked after he wrote, he said, yeah, she deserves to be stoned. But let me give you the qualifier. Only the person that is without fault themselves can throw the first stone. Oh, the Bible says that when he said that, they dropped their rocks. <laughs> they dropped their rocks because they knew that they had some stuff too. And the only reason why they was going to stone her is because nobody saw them do that. Oh, oh, don't don't miss me now. Don't miss me now. But aren't you glad that even when you still got your issue, the Lord still gives you grace. Tell somebody, I got a story to tell. I got a story to tell. Second thing God does, and I'm almost finished. We, we, we need to understand this. On reason why you got a story to tell is that the miracle that's me. Okay, let me see. Can I rewind that? Uh, 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 I'm a miracle. And I don't know about you this morning, but I know that I am a miracle. When I look back over my life, Come on, now. and I think, oh God, <laughs> some things over. I, I don't know about y'all, but I can truly say that I have been blessed. I got a, yeah, <laughs> I got a test the morning because I should be dead. Sleeping in my grave. But the Lord had his hand on my life. And every time the devil plotted my demise, God stepped in and blocked the devils out. Oh, I know I ain't by myself, Roy, this morning. I know that there's two or three of y'all. I make four or five that can say that I am a miracle. God stepped in. He showed up. He showed out. And I thank the Lord that I'm not what I used to be, but I give him praise that I'm not what I should be. And I thank God I'm on my way to what he wants me to be. Somebody shout, I'm a miracle today. I'm a miracle today. I'm a miracle today. I'm a miracle today. Peter and John are miracles in the text. Because this is post-Pentecost Peter. Post-Pentecost John. Prior to Pentecost, they had some issues with staying close to Jesus. But after the day of Pentecost, they were manifested as those uh, who have been with Jesus. Oh, Y'all missed it right there. The, the record says that they looked at Peter and John. And they knew, Deacon Golden, that they were unlearned, uh, uneducated, and unintelligent. They were ignorant men. But how many of y'all know that when you spend a little time with Jesus, 
It don't matter where you've been, what you've done. It's that you've been at the master's feet and he'll give you some wisdom that you can't find in a book. He'll give you some knowledge that you can't find in seminary. He'll give you some grandmama theology that will carry you the rest of your life. And my, my mama and my grandmama will always say, the Lord always got a plan. I thank God for the miracle that I am. And somebody here today can thank God that you are a walking miracle. Come on, give God praise. I'm a walking miracle. And lastly, we see in the text that after Peter and John showed up, they're the miracles, amen, that's me, amen. You got to remind yourself that I am a miracle. You can't lose sight of the fact that you are a miracle. And if God manifests you as a miracle, that means you got miracle power in you. Okay, y'all miss y'all shout. Because he made me a miracle, that means my miracle making can be put on somebody else and I can be an agent of change because I know that he changed me. I'm a miracle that he changed. I, I was stuck on drugs. He changed my life. I, I, I was still in stuff, but he changed my life. I was tore up from the floor, but he changed my life. I was on the outside looking in, but he changed my life. I was homeless, didn't have a job, but he changed my life. I was catching a bus, but now I'm driving. He changed my life. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Somebody shall Lord, thank you. I'm a miracle. I got a story to tell. I thank God for his grace. I thank the Lord that I am the miracle that I can see that's me. Uh, it's one thing to shout over somebody else's miracle. But it's another thing to shout about you being the miracle. Don't y'all ever lose sight of how you are the miracle. As a matter of fact, if somebody ever says to you, uh, 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 where are the miracles that the Lord did in the Bible? Just tell them to touch you on the shoulder because apparently they hadn't seen a miracle. You just want them to touch one because you are the miracle that, that the Lord is manifesting in this dispensation. You are the miracle that God, amen, is a changer of lives. You are the miracle that God is the one that gives you a new direction. Somebody here, well, I know how the old school said, I looked at my hands and yeah, y'all know it. I looked at my feet and they did too. What a wonderful change that's come over. I got to get out of here. It's time to go. But there's also the power of my presence. The reason I got a story to tell is because I walk in power in my presence. You cannot walk in power in your present holding on to your past. Okay, okay. You, 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 you can't walk in power in your present holding on to your past. Okay, okay, let me see. Can I put this where you can reach it? I know you didn't go past the fourth grade. But just because you didn't go past the fourth grade, that don't mean you got a fourth grade God. Okay, y'all, some of y'all miss me here. The Bible says they knew they were uneducated, knew they were unlearned, but couldn't deny the power of God that was on their lives. Y'all listen, y'all shout right now. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor who you are is undeniable. Who 
who, who, who you are <laughs> is undeniable. Don't you let nobody put you down. Don't you let nobody get you to think you're lesser than. Don't you even think uh, that you cannot do, amen, uh, what you think in your mind that you want to do. Hey, see, some of y'all cancel your own dreams out uh, by saying, I can't do that. Well, you are so right. Uh, but I heard somewhere that the Bible says greater he uh, that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, if you in the world, you look at man's power uh, to do those miraculous things. Uh, and man's power, man's ingenuity, man's effort can only go so far. Uh, but when you're finding yourself uh, with Jesus, things can turn on uh, and turn out all right. I never forget I was in a hotel room in the Congress of Christian Education and we was in Tampa. Dick McGregor, I got there and I couldn't turn the lights on where I was trying to, to read and to study. I was at the desk, the light wouldn't turn on. I went on the bed, turned on the lamps. Y'all know the lamps on the side of the bed. I turned on the lamps. They wasn't working. I said, what kind of hotel is this that ain't got no lights working? I took the bulbs out, shook the bulbs. Y'all know how we do. To see if the filament was gone. I didn't hear no tingling, ling, ling, ling in there. Put the bulbs back. I called downstairs. And you know, sometimes when I'm displeased, I got a disposition. And and I, and I said to the lady downstairs, what kind of hotel is this? Y'all ain't got no lights working. The car, well, we're going to send somebody up real quick. Man comes up, the engineer comes up. Big McGregor, and he said, what's the problem, sir? I said, the lights don't work in here. <laughs> Trying to study my word, got a word to give, and, and I ain't got no light to study the word of God. He went over to the desk, took the light bulb out, shook the light bulb. Y'all know what I said. I already did that. Put the light bulb back. He said, well, I got one more thing to check. He pulled back the desk, got down on his knees, saw that this connection had taken place. Put the plug in the socket and lo and behold lights were on. And that's all I'm trying to tell somebody today that, that you may have been unplugged before your Pentecost experience. But ever since you've been with Jesus it gets sweeter than the day before. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor stay plugged in. Because when you stay plugged in, you got some power that the devil can't see. When you stay plugged in, you got power that the enemy cannot stop. When you stay plugged in, you got some power that can trample over scorpions. You got power that you can drink deadly poison and nothing can harm you when you stay plugged in. I want you to know today that there's power in the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, stay plugged in because you got a story to tell. When you stay plugged in, there's power for the believer. But let me tell you how to stay plugged in. You got to get down on your knee. Every day, you got to pray unto God. I ain't talking about these little can prayers. Uh, uh, Lord, I thank you for this day uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. No, I'm talking about some showing up, 
get down, get down praying and knowing that you got a devil to fight on tomorrow. You got a devil to fight on today. And you got to know that you got to have power to come against that devil. And Peter and John said, do you want me to entertain what you saying? No, brother, I can't do that because the God that gave me power to manifest in your presence is the God that I'm going to. man, young brother by the name of Michael. Michael was, was a bad little joker. Michael will always be doing something mischievous. As a matter of fact, they nicknamed him Mischievous Michael. And every time Michael would do something bad, sending him down to the principal's office, next thing you know, Michael come walking out the principal's office. And they said, Michael, how in the world did you get out of that? And Michael looked at them and said, it's all in the plan. <laughs> Michael would go on, get arrested, went to juvie, Went to the judge, judge withheld adjudication. Sent Michael on home with his mama. And they said, Michael, how you got out of not going to juvie? Sister McCray, Michael said, it's all in the plan. They go ahead on graduate. Ten years later, they come back to the reunion. And them boys who did well knew Michael did never go to class. But somehow on graduation day, Michael was walking across the stage. They looked at each other and said, how in the world did Michael graduate? Y'all know what he said. He was said, it's all in the plan. They was at the reunion, Deacon McGregor. And they were looking for their friend named Michael. They couldn't find Michael nowhere. So they said, there got to be some places where we know Michael should be. I said, should be. They went down to the corner where the dope dealers hang out. And they said, Michael wasn't at the corner. Because they said he should be at the corner. Went on back to the projects that they grew up in. Thought that Michael was still in the projects. Went to his old apartment and Michael wasn't in the projects. Went on down to the police station. Because you know Michael's trajectory had him going to jail. And so Michael was Ran their name and Michael wasn't even at the police station. Well, they said, as bad as that Negro was, he got to be dead now. Went on down to the morgue, Jesse, and went to see the records to see was anybody named Michael Williams dead at the morgue. And they thought that everywhere Michael should be, Michael was nowhere to be found. They went on back to the reunion the next day and they was talking about Michael and a janitor overheard them talking about Michael. And she said to them, y'all looking for Michael Williams? Y'all talking about Michael Williams? They said, yeah. Do you know where he is? She said, yes, I know where he is. I'm about to go meet him right now. And if you want to see Micah, just come with me. They followed sister on down the road to the other side of town. Went over across the tracks to the other side. Drove into this huge parking lot 
and they saw this big old church, big old mega church. And they got out the car and they asked the lady, so Micah is in there? She said, yes, Micah Williams is in here. They said to each other, he must be sweeping floors. Walked into the church, looked around and said, Lord, have mercy. This is a beautiful sanctuary. How many seats does this sanctuary have? She said, oh, we got 3,000 seats. And he said, so and you, you mean to tell me it's crowded every Sunday? She said, no, not every Sunday, but every Tuesday it's crowded. Every Sunday at 8 is crowded. Every Sunday at 11 is crowded. And we're about to start a 3 o'clock service and see how crowded that's going to get to. They was looking like, my God, my God, what a beautiful place. To go on down. She says, come on, I'm going to take you to see Michael Williams. Walk on down the hallway. Get to the pastor's door. And they said, look at him again. Michael must have did something wrong with the pastor. Michael must have did something wrong with that pastor. He's always getting in trouble. Open up the door. The sister said, Pastor Williams, you got some friends here to see. They looked at Michael and they said, Lord, have mercy. Michael, you mean to tell me you the pastor of this mega church how in the world are you the pastor of this mega church Michael smiled at him and said it's all in the plan he said Michael you've been saying that all our lives that it's all in the plan what made you say it's all in the plan well the difference between me and you Michael said is that my mama went to church every Sunday. Y'all, mama and daddy stayed at home. I ain't had no daddy in the house. And my mama had to make it being on her knees. And every time I get in trouble, she'll look at me and say, son, I ain't worried about you. Because I know the Lord got a plan for your life. I ain't worried about what's going to happen in your life. But I'm going to love you until you be what I know the Lord has called you to be. I'm here to tell you, son, that the Lord has a plan for your life. And every time I get in the situation, I hear my mama tell me, God, got a plan for your life. And I'm here to let somebody know that when you have a praying mother, when you got somebody praying over your life, you don't have to worry about what you're dealing with right now. Because God, yeah, God got a plan for your life. And he looked at Micah, and Micah had a plaque over his head, and the plaque read, it's all in the plan of God. And I just came by to tell somebody, when you look at your life, and you see what the Lord has brought you from, you can be like Michael, and say, I didn't start out the right way. I had some things in my life uh, that I'm too ashamed to repeat right now. Uh, but I thank the Lord, yeah, uh, that he had a plan for my life. And, uh, I give God praise today uh, because I look around this sanctuary. Uh, I can see somebody uh, that know the Lord, yeah, uh, had a plan for your life. Uh, and you know that the God you serve had a plan for your life. You ought to give him praise today and tell a young neighbor, do me one favor, turn to somebody and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God got a plan for your life. And he ain't through uh, with you yet. Uh, we all uh, are a work in progress. Uh, 
And since he's working on me, I'm going to give him praise for not giving up on me. Because he's working on me. He ain't gave up on me. And I got a story to tell somebody just how good the Lord has been. Is there anybody here you can testify with me? That the Lord's been good. I said the Lord's been good. I'm going to tell somebody. Because y'all know he's been good. Let me give you five reasons. Why you ought to praise the Lord. Five reasons. Why you ought to give him praise. Are y'all ready for the reasons? If you're ready for the reasons. Say yeah. Say yeah. If you're ready for the reason, I'm going to give you number one. He's been good. Yes, Lord. That's reason number one. You ought to give him praise. Reason number two. He's been good. Is there anybody here know that the Lord gave you a reason? If you need one more reason, reason number three. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Reason number four. He's been good. Yes, he has. Reason number five. He's been good. Now say to me, he's been good to me. If you know that he's been good, say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Hallelujah. He's been good. He's got a plan for your life. And I praise the Lord because he worked it out. I praise the Lord because he brought me out. I praise the Lord because he got his hand on your life. And no matter what, the devil tries. Yeah. I said, God, I said, God, God, he's working out, won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Don't, don't fool me now. Don't you know that the Lord will do it? Have you ever had your back against the wall and the Lord brought you through him? Have you had? some dark days and the Lord saw you through have you had some mountains that you couldn't hardly climb but the Lord brought you up have you had some valleys low you didn't think you were going to come out but you're here today say yeah yeah I thank the Lord that he got his hand on your life. Is there anybody, is there anybody here? You can thank God that he got his hand on your life. You shouldn't be here today. But God, I said God, I said God, God got his hand. On your life. You got a story. 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 You got a story to tell. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Do you know that? Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus, can't nobody. Come on, come on, stand on your feet. Be like better go. Yeah, can't nobody. Yeah, yeah. Do me like Jesus. Oh, he. Come on, you got a story to tell. Come on. Can't nobody. What did he 
did he do? What did he do? What did he do? He picked me up. He picked me up. He picked me up. He picked me up. And he told me. He picked me up. He picked me up. He picked me up. Oh, my God. 